Like most of his fans, when I first read the book and embraced the central character, Sal Paradise, I projected onto Kerouac and his book a romanticized notion that the book was an irreverent search for lost authenticity, an affirmation of being carefree and liberated from the confines of quotidian habits with a thirst for spontaneous exploration of the unknown and new revelations about being in the moment, in a place. We now know the backstory that puts these projections into context. For starters, it took Kerouac four long-distance trips to write the book. The trip served his deliberate and arduous effort to produce a book. The purpose of the trips was literature, not necessarily the discovery or the joys of being on the road. The road was, in fact, a means to get somewhere, and to get somewhere fast. We also know that in the last decade of his life, Kerouac withdrew into a bitter, confined existence with his mother, tortured, death-obsessed, alcoholic. <laughs> How do I return to North Korea? How do I look at these images now? How do I make sense of the experience now? We were three female academics from California. As we were driven in a new Nissan van around Pyongyang to the DMZ and back by way of Kaesong on the bumpy roads, the blurred images of the many people we passed on the streets are suggestive of the frustrating sense of disconnect that I felt with the place and the people. The only citizens we were allowed to know somewhat were those who were assigned to us, our minders. We spent most of our 10 days with them with the full understanding that we'd never be in contact again. In fact, my memory of them now is not that much better than that of the blurred figures on the road. Mm -hmm. 
Actually, slow motion allows some insight into the blurred images. Watching it now, there is a sense of intimacy and connection that we craved during the trip but never fully realized. We can see now that some of the children waved to us. I think we waved back. I hope we did. What did they see? Is it us female foreigners or my big video camera? What did they think about us? Do they remember us? According to the captured images, we are caught in the reciprocal act of looking, however fleeting it actually was. A suspended state of affirmation? Is this the beginning of romance and mythmaking? For instance, when I felt the sudden burst of sun rays, was I basking and lingering in the warmth of the glow that lasted a mere sliver of time, all the while forgetting that the sun bursts were also momentarily blinding? Recalling the Eliot poem, did our trip to North Korea reveal that one place that was actual for one time and only one place? Even then, that place and time did not seem its own. Perhaps the places we visited were claimed by too much history, too much backstory. Perhaps it's not just the travelers who are restless and transitory. Places are two. I realize I haven't, you know, we haven't been out at night. <laughs> After a long day on the road, nightfall seems abrupt. Where did the road end? <laughs> 